it is a monster. It's disastrous. It's, it's something that should never happen in the community. It shouldn't be experienced by our community. From his funeral home, Louis Charbonnet's witnessed the death of somewhere that was once the beating heart of New Orleans. In the past 60 years, this elevated thoroughfare wiped out a major center of African-American culture, commerce and heritage. Still surviving, buried under the freeway, lies his centuries-old company. We've been here first. <laughs> We've been here since 1883. The, the monster came along in the 60s, the late 60s. But it's had a detrimental effect on my business because people are reluctant to come in this neighborhood. They think that the, the interstate is, is a crime-infested area. Its construction at the time destroyed hundreds of homes and black-owned businesses, transforming a thriving, vibrant hub of inner-city life into this. What residents tell us is a noisy, decrepit, unsafe and unhealthy underworld. I think it's a crime to allow people to continue to live in these conditions when we can do better. Amy Stelly wants the highway removed, alleging that a long history of discriminatory policies allowed overbearing transportation projects to be unfairly built in neighborhoods of color, a pattern she says is reflected all over the U.S. Redlining actually gave the federal government and city governments, local governments, permission to declare area slums and clear them. So it it was a way of, of giving permission to do something that was not beneficial. There is hope of driving change. The White House singled out this expressway as a prime target of its Reconnecting Communities program, aimed at stitching together places that had been cleaved apart. Amy used it to apply for a grant, suggesting the viaduct be demolished, whilst the state government put forward its own proposal to keep the main structure but detach some on-off ramps to open up space for redevelopment. Instead, the US Department of Transportation pressed the brakes and gave Louisiana just $500,000, far less than the tens of millions it had requested. The money will be spent on planning, consultation, and assessing the potential impacts of a decision before anything is set in concrete. This split precinct speaks to a divide across America. The city's crossroads emblematic of a gridlock debate happening nationwide. Yes, historic racism is embedded in several urban highways stateside. However, tearing down what tore neighborhoods apart could lead to even more disruption and displacement. That's an argument presented by most politicians here who support the state's $95 million plan, not as expensive and complex as a full removal, which could cost more than half a billion dollars. Think about where that bridge is going and where it takes you to. Sean Wilson ran for governor of Louisiana last year. He's sympathetic to calls to dismantle the road, but urges people to be pragmatic redirecting up to 130,000 vehicles per day, he claims, is simply not feasible. It's not practical, it's not a real solution, and even when you do that, you're creating implications that are gonna have other ramifications for traveling through that corridor to begin with. The concern I have with just removing it is that you're going to do more harm elsewhere. Doesn't do anything for those families 50 years ago, I get that, but you don't necessarily have to do more harm. Leaving it up, though, won't be cheap either. The cost to repair and maintain crumbling infrastructure from generations past will also run into hundreds of millions of dollars in the next few decades. Some, like Louis, can't afford to wait that long. I'll be 85 in two months, and I hope on my 86th birthday, before my 86th birthday, I can celebrate this bridge being gone. Benji Heyer, CGTN, New Orleans, Louisiana.